here we go. Okay, can you write that down, please? Wait and drag. Oops. Yeah? Got that? Okay. So, uh, first thing, definition, <coughs> gravitational force. Uh, that's basically the force of attraction between all matter. And you'll normally only feel that when there's something very big nearby. So, for example, we can all feel we're being pulled down. And the reason we're being pulled down is because the Earth is under us. Okay, so there's this force called gravitational force, and it pulls things down to it. Okay, um, so I think for an exam that would be, you know, or for your notes, that's enough actually. It's attraction between all mass, and it's what keeps you on Earth and not floating in space. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, continue. So when we say the weight of an object, what's that? Does anyone know? What do we mean when we say weight? What exactly is weight? It's down the force. Yeah, yeah. It's like mass, yeah. It's related to mass, <coughs> related to downward force. The weight of an object is the gravity force it experiences. So, like what you said, the weight is the downward force. Okay, continue. Yeah. Uh, so let's find the formula for weight on Earth. It's not actually not too difficult. So there's the ground. There's a let's say an apple, and it's fallen down to the Earth. Okay. So there there's um, an acceleration, and it's 9.81 meters per second squared down. And remember I said if there's an acceleration then there's a force. And we call this acceleration G. Okay. So if we're looking down as positive just for the moment we can say F equals MA but the A is actually G. And the F is actually the weight. So that's, that's the formula. Weight equals mg down. So not, not very, very difficult. We have our simple formula, weight equals mg. Yep. W is the weight, m is the mass, and g is the acceleration due to gravity. The usual stuff here. Alright, so here's a simple one. Uh, how much does 2 kilogram physics book weigh on Earth? So give me the weight here. 
Yeah, about nearly 20 newtons. How much does it weigh on the moon? And on the moon, the acceleration due to gravity is six times smaller than on Earth. So on the moon, g is six times smaller. So what's the weight now? Like it should be smaller. 3.27. You need to divide by 6. Yeah, what'd you get? 3.27. Yeah, about 3 newtons. Yeah? Uh, a 2 kilogram physics book weighs 4 newtons on an asteroid. What is the mass of the book? That's a trick question. What's the mass here? Yeah, no, no, no. right in front of you. What's the mass? It's two kilograms. Yeah, that doesn't change. Two kilograms. Right. Now, which will hit the ground first? Yeah, which will hit the ground first? First one. What is the first one? Ah, you do know it. A bowling ball. Bowling ball. Yeah. Ah, uh, but there's a small problem with this. If, if the ball hits the ground first, okay, so let's have a look why I said it's a small problem. Here is the ball and here is the feather. Okay, and let's say that's the distance, right? Let's just say one meter, okay, one meter. So they both start at rest, yes. V, we don't know. A, we do know. T, we don't know, and S, let's say we do know. So, it, it, the T should be the same. So there's something wrong in my picture. Something I'm, something I'm doing wrong. Can anyone see what's wrong in this picture? It's a feather. Which value? It's a feather, so... Ah, yeah, so like pinpoint which number or which thing is wrong. A. The A is wrong. Which one is wrong? Yeah, why? Because of aerodynamics. Yeah, it's, it's not quite right to say this is minus g. And the reason for that is, in real life, there's actually two forces. The weight and one going up from the air. But for the ball, this is, you know, it's about zero. We only really care about it when it's something small. Then uh, we can say it, it's not really zero. So, we've only considered one force, which is the weight, but in real life there's actually many forces, like you said, the air. Um, here's an example. So when we drive our car, we think of the force from the engine that makes it go forward. That's called the thrust. But there's an actually a force from the air that makes it want to go backwards, and that's called the drag. When the car is going slowly, this is zero. But when the car is going fast, this is not zero. Okay. Now you do need these words. These are important words. So if you can make note, uh, the thrust is what drives it forward and the drag is what pulls it backwards. Whoa! Let's not break anything. We have this next concept called terminal velocity, and this is actually the maximum speed a fallen object can have. And, and here's a picture of it. <coughs> so what happens is he jumps out of the plane, and he travels faster and faster and faster. But then, at one point, he has a maximum speed. Now he's still falling, of course, but he's not getting faster. And the reason for that is because his weight now equals the drag. 
So he's still falling, but he's not accelerating. His speed is constant. This is called the terminal velocity. It's the maximum velocity a fallen object can have. Now he can change his terminal velocity. So when he opens the parachute, his terminal velocity reduces. So he's still falling, but he's not accelerating. He's traveling at a constant speed, terminal velocity. Uh, animals like cats, I think, have a low terminal velocity. So they fall, they go faster and faster, but then they reach a maximum speed. So the maximum speed is not, not as big as for people, I think. So if a cat and a person was falling, um, the person it will be going faster than the cat, I think. Um, yeah, it depends on many things. Okay, continue. Right, so this is just a question for us to think about. A car of mass M starts at rest and accelerates with A by a force. The driver keeps his foot down, but the car doesn't accelerate forever. Why not? So why doesn't the car just keep going faster and faster if you just put your foot down? What stops the car going faster and faster? Drive the drive force, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the drive force will eventually equal the trust force, yeah. This was an exam question a few years ago for like one or two marks. The question was, why won't cars accelerate forever? And as you say, because the drive force will eventually equal uh, the trust force. Okay, well let's have a look at an actual question here. Uh, a euro coin is dropped from the top of a 100 meter building. How long would it take the coin to hit the ground? If this experiment was really done, would the coin take longer or shorter to hit the ground? So what I want you to do is calculate the time for the coin to fall. Okay? What's the U? What's the U? U. Zero. The V? Don't know. The A? Yeah, minus 9.81. The T we don't know. And the S? Uh, maybe minus 100. Why minus 100? Why minus 100? Okay. I want you to calculate the T, please.
Got it? What's the time? 4.52? 4.51. Roughly, yeah. Now, if you really did this, would the time be bigger or smaller? If you went out and actually did this, would the time be bigger or smaller than what you got? Now think before you answer. Would it be bigger or smaller time? Right, what do we think? Bigger or smaller? Bigger, yeah. If you really did this, the time would be bigger. Because of the drag. It would take it longer to hit the ground. Okay. Now, here's the last example, I think. It's actually <coughs> very hard. So I'll do it. All I want you to do... Uh, steel, the material is S-T-E-E-L, isn't it? Or S-T-E-A-L? S-T-E-E-L. Oh, good, good. I was worried I spelt it wrong then. A uh, 100 gram steel ball is dropped in a tall beaker of oil. I, that's what I thought. I looked at it and I knew it looked wrong. Disgraceful. Disgraceful. I'll have to fix that in a minute. Right. A steel ball is dropped into a tall beaker of oil. So what you have is something like this. It's full of oil. Maybe 80 centimetres of oil. Okay. And you drop this into it. And it takes 10 seconds to hit the bottom. That's a long time, isn't it? Because if I was to drop something... To drop, it should only take like 80 centimeters. You know, it should only take like one second. Okay, but I put in the oil and it goes mm, slowly, 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 slowly. It takes 10 seconds because the drag is really, really big. I want to calculate the average drag force. Okay, so let me draw the picture here. Uh, you've got your beaker full of oil, in it is the ball, this is 80 centimeters and it's 100 grams, 0 0.1 kilograms, okay, 100 grams, yeah, this little steel ball here, and it'll take 10 seconds before it will hit the ground. Now, there's two forces on this, a weight and a drag, but there's a small problem with the drag force. The drag force isn't constant, okay? When do you think the drag force is smallest? Top. The top, why? You're right, but why? Isn't that yeah, go on, don't be shy. Yeah, why? Acceleration? Yeah, why? Well, has a higher acceleration than the top. Correct, but why? What's making the drag less on the top? Less ground feedback. No, that's the same. It's because um, I don't know if you know this. If you ever, if you ever swimming, you know, or if you're running or whatever, if you're moving slowly, it's kind of easy to move through something. But as soon as you start to move faster, you can feel it pushing against you. Yeah? So if you're in a swimming pool or whatever, as you move faster, you feel more drag. So because it just started at rest, there's not much drag. Uh, when will the drag be the greatest? As it accelerates. As it accelerates. So it should be biggest here. This is quite complicated. So for this problem, what we'll do is we'll just say, the uh, drag is an average. So we'll just imagine it's the same drag for the whole journey. But in real life, it's not. It actually changes. If you were to picture it as a graph, there's time and there's drag. It starts off quite small and then probably reaches a maximum. Okay. But we'll just assume it's constant. Right. So let's, uh, let's have to think about this. Um, what do we know? We know U. We don't know V. We don't actually know A because it's not 9.81. We do know T and we do know S. Can I get A? 
I can. No. Well, I could from these three, yeah. yeah. So, V squared? No. V equals U plus AT? No. S equals. S equals UT plus a half A T squared. That's A. Is that minus 1.6? Is that the A? I think so. Right? No, 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 I have the decimals wrong, sorry. Um, 0 0.16. Is that the A? 0 0.8 over 50? Yoink. No, that's also wrong. Two zeros. That's the A. Okay. So that's minus, so that's down. Um, Newton said S equals MA. What's the M here? Easy peasy, that's 0 0.1. What's the A? That's minus 0 0.016. And what's the force? The force is the drag minus the weight. Because there's two forces that combine. And why did I put a minus and not a plus? Why didn't I say drag plus weight? Why did I, why did I say minus? Yeah, why is this a minus and not a plus? What do we think? If this is D and this is W, why did I minus and not add them? Yeah, because they're going in opposite directions. And now the second question, which is a little bit harder, why did I say D minus W and not W minus D? Yeah? Yeah, D is going up. And also, what I was thinking, um, the W is bigger than the D. And because the right-hand side is minus, I need the left hand side to be minus as well, so I need to put it this way around. Okay, do we know the D? No. Do we know the W? Yes, because W is MG. Okay, so D will equal MG minus 0 0.0016. So D equals 0 0.1 times 9.81 minus 0 0.0016 which is 0 0.981 minus 0 0.0016 uh, hey. <laughs> whatever it is Zero point nine seven nine four newtons Newtons. That's the drag. This should be a four. That is the average drag. Now that's a very hard question. I know it's very hard. How is it not How do I? Oh, you see, the weight is, is is the same no matter what you're in. Okay. It's the drag that changes, and that makes it. And the drag already changed, so it's yeah. not going to change. The drag we already considered, yeah, as the D in the formula. So can you see how the um, the drag is actually nearly equal to the weight? Because I think you said the weight is 0 0.981 newtons. Which makes sense because it's moving so slowly the two forces should nearly cancel.
Okay, can I close this? Yeah. There we go. Oh yeah, we've got plenty of time now to practice some more. Um, yes, these questions, they're harder. They're harder, so you'll need more time to practice. The good news for you is they're very, very, very rare exam question. Okay, so yeah, this one here. So maybe you have a five percent chance of seeing it in the exam, maybe even less. Uh, so don't worry if you find them hard. Just do your best to try and get some of them done now. Okay, so wait and drag now. Yeah, yeah, it's just, now see this is week two, now it's getting tougher.